So mean. Welcome to Penn State. Thank it's you a very pleasure much. To have thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for a really um, informative, inspiring kind of vision of things. I'd like to follow up a little bit uh, on those questions. And um, as I shared with you, we do this program called Coil Perspectives. We pick a, a single theme and uh, we ask all of our guests the same three questions so we can kind of do comparisons over time. And this year, our theme is really around retention. This is an issue that not only Penn State, but both on ground and in virtual schools are dealing with. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, the first question has to do with what does retention mean to you when you hear that word? How do you think about it? Frame it for me a little bit. Then I'm going to lead into a second question, which will be around if you had all the resources in the world, um, what, what, did, what would the environment be like for a student in order to help them succeed and retain? And finally, the question will be, okay, we, if we don't have all of the resources, what can we do as a next step? So let's start with the first one. What does retention mean to you? So to me, retention is about keeping students engaged and involved in the campus community. So mm -hmm. that's not only involved in the classroom, it's involved in extracurricular. And I think it goes beyond the student's time at the university. So, so how, how do you engage them um, beyond that? And I think one of the, so I went to University of Iowa, and one of the things I found, uh, I'm from Illinois, and my, my parents did not go to University of Iowa, but there were a lot of students there who went there because their parents went there, right, or their parents encouraged them to go there. So I, I, think, I think that the retention, while a lot of conversations happen around graduation and, and graduation rates and, and completion in five years or six years, I, I think there's this whole lifelong engagement with, with the campus and with, with the people on the campus that, that is included in that retention definition in my mind. You know, I, I really like the inclusion in your definition of the word engagement. Um, and engagement being a, a part of the retention package. So, so your talk, and in, in, we've had some sidebar conversations, is about how we use data to, to support that. Um, when you're now talking about sort of this, the other parts of your growth experience in college, how, um, so I understand the on-ground stuff, but, but um, Penn State's World Campus is predominantly an online. How do we help students engage in their university in, in a virtual space. Any thoughts about, in order to help retention yeah. and all that? Well, I, I, I still think there's opportunity. So obviously people have brand affinity for places that they've only visit online. And so I, I, I think there's, there's a lot of to do around the culture, around how, um, I, again, I go back to the engagement. So how do you engage with the online students in a way that um, is interesting to them and, and keeps them communicating back to you, because I think that's one of the other challenges that, that I've seen in, in my past in my past careers is that the engagement can't only be one way, it has to be something that comes back to to help build that cycle. So um, I, I think Facebook is the most obvious example. So you have to give students a reason to want to engage with the university and vice versa. So I, I think that's really, um, obviously in the digital world, people are connected all the time. And how, how do you maintain that connection in a way that's um, valuable to the students without it being burdensome on, on either party. It, and my, my guess would be, uh, I, I hope you might agree with this, is that those techniques and strategies that we build to engage the online learner um, would also be of interest and support for a face-to-face -face student as well. Yeah. I mean, these aren't just for one environment or the other. Yeah, and, and I, I think with the face-to-face, -face, I think well, hopefully it's a much smaller part of, of their their engagement with the university and the campus, but I do think that's also important because even um, you walk around campus and you see students looking at their phones as they're walking mm -hmm. across campus. So obviously they're they're engaged digitally, and, and I think that is part of it. But the, the physical connection is also is also important. Yeah. And how do you capitalize on that? So, Absolutely. so let me transition to the second question. Let's pretend for a moment that you or Unison or whomever has all of the resources they need. What would a um, what might a system look like that um, encourages the success, retention, persistence, whatever we want to call it, of the learner? And and if you would maybe think about that online learner for us, because that's a space where at least in yeah. our environment where we live. What what would that system that? I I think it's I, I think a lot of the pieces are already are already mm -hmm. in place to allow that to happen. I think it's a matter of bringing together. Um, a lot of the 
the innovations that have happened around dynamic um, in the industry they call it customer relationship management or student relationship management. Um, how, how do you? One of the things that I found enjoyable in my undergraduate experience is all the experiences that come to campus. So you have great speakers come to campus. How do you how do you share that with people online as well? So I think that there's. Um, I guess if I had all the money in the world, as you said, it, it would be a, a large marketing. It, it, it would essentially take the shape of a large marketing blitz, where, where you're you're engaging with them, you're, you're sharing your brand, you're building brand recognition, and again, you're giving them some reason to communicate back to you, to, to have them give you feedback and stay engaged, not only with the campus, but with their classmates and their colleagues and, and others. So you're saying that points may be now. I'll say this, maybe we'll edit this out, but to a, um, actually to a deficit a little bit about, say for example, this program, I, I wonder if we're doing enough of that reaching out, because we're, we're working primarily in the rural campus with adult learners. Are we doing enough, even as COIL, as a research unit, to get our message out to those communities? Not all the students will be interested, yeah, but, but some may be. I think that's a really good observation. That's one I can take back and yeah. use that. And, and I, I think it's, it's not only, it's not only sharing. It, it's just making the awareness. It, it's yeah. knowing. It's knowing that they are part of this community and they get access to something because they are Penn State. Mm -hmm. and not not just. It's not just something that everybody can go to. And I know these talk, these talks are open to everybody, but there's there, there's some exclusivity or some value to them being part of this community as well. You know, it's interesting you say that. Just a sidelight, but um, in the last couple of years, it's become obvious, not only to me, but a lot of our colleagues, that as adult learners, um, that they're balancing a lot, that they have such a high desire to be engaged, if you will, to borrow your term, um, with the university and, and um, for example, in research. Mm -hmm. They want to find ways to connect and do real and meaningful things. So they might not be going to parties on Friday night, <laughs> right? Um, but they might want to be included in a research project of yeah. some sort. And that, that's always a challenge for us, is how do we create those linkages? Yeah, that's so. a great point. So, um, let me go to the last question. What's like one thing, give me one nugget that maybe we can consider doing? And you've, you've already kind of helped me that way, <laughs> but, but maybe another one of how we can help our students stay engaged and... and uh... So, so I, I think the other, the other thing that, um, and, and, and we talked about the pendulum going too far in the other direction, but I think the pendulum needs to start swinging more towards uh, better data around what students are doing. And, and I'll give you an example of um, in, an on-campus uh, use of that data. So at a university that I won't mention, they track students when they come in and out of their dorm room. And what they found is that students who uh, commute to campus, so people who go home every weekend mm -hmm. and then come back for, during the week for courses are less likely to stay, are less likely to graduate in six years than students who stay on campus, even if they live in the same same distance away from campus. So, so having information about that and, and understanding, mm -hmm. and again, I, I don't mean to pry students' private lives, but understanding what it is that takes them home every weekend. Is it that they have a job? Do they have parent care issues? Is it, what, what is it that takes them away? But having that information, knowing that this student is is not engaged on campus can help, and this, this university is doing that, they're, they're being more proactive about how they engage with that. And, and similarly, with online programs, if you see that students are only engaging with the course or the course where the day before class, and, and they come to class and that's all they do, and they don't do anything else, they don't, um, you can start mapping networks of student interaction. Sure. So if you see some students are a separate node from everyone else, that's, mm -hmm. that's also an indicator where you can start uh, in, again, engaging and, and being proactive about that yeah. communication. So I would say the, the, the little thing that we can start doing is start getting the data in there, but then once you have that, the data is not going to solve everything, so right. once you have the data, there's a lot of other work beyond. So it's the action then? Is the Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, having the data is one thing, but figuring out what is the right um, action to take based on that data is important, because um, an email is not always enough, and sometimes mm -hmm. an email is too much, so mm -hmm. it's, what's the right thing to do? Yeah. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. Thank you it's very much. It's been a pleasure having you here, right. and I appreciate your insights.